The deep state, very angry with Tucker Carlson and the truth about January 6th. Tucker Carlson just happened to be the person who got his hands on it and released it for all of us to see. We've wanted to see it for a long time, been screaming about it. If this was such a horrendous insurrection, well, then why can't we just see what actually happened? I mean, shouldn't we see it from multiple angles? They played the same clips over and over again for two years now. Why can't we see the rest of it? Just so we can really see that you didn't selectively pull out what was the worst highlights and leave out the rest of it. And so now Tucker, of course, got his hands on this and started to show us just a little sliver, okay, like two minutes of additional footage on repeat, absolute meltdown all across the country. We've got the media flipping out, Schumer flipping out. We've got senators who are backstabbing Republican people and Republican causes, so-called. And the whole thing is just turned into madness because they do not want this truth to be revealed. This is really what was, I think, kind of the final climactic event for their entire effort to remove Trump from American political life. So we picked up the show yesterday talking about Chuck Schumer, and he gave a five-minute speech from the floor of the Senate castigating Fox News, saying, Rupert Murdoch, get out there and tell Tucker Carlson to shut his mouth. He's too dangerous. He is rewriting history. He's not allowed to have another opinion in this country. You're not allowed to see the evidence in America anymore. To hell with due process and said that he should be censored. And I was sort of joking about this yesterday, saying, man, you know, it's Fox News. What are they going to do? It's Tucker Carlson. He's going to come out and release the rest of the footage. Of course, certainly, right? Like, no question about that. It's Tucker Carlson. Biggest show in the whole country. He is sort of bigger than anybody else, right? He's kind of immovable in many ways. But then the show came out, right? And there was a little bit less footage than many of us were expecting. Didn't see a whole lot of the additional videos. And... Just hours before that, Chuck Schumer was saying, do not publish another episode. Don't you dare do it. And even though these people are clowns, even though we joke and lampoon them all the time, they do run the U.S. Congress. They do run the most powerful government in the whole world. And so when they come barking down the neck of Fox News, they're going to buckle. And maybe they did. So we don't hold any of that against Tucker Carlson, of course. But Fox News, come on, guys. We know where they stand. So here is Chuck Schumer after he was on the floor of the Senate screeching and ranting about trying to avoid the truth coming out so that America could just see it. I don't even need Tucker's commentary on top of it. That's okay. I'd rather just see the raw video files, quite frankly. But at least we got something and they don't even want to give us that sliver. We asked for 14, 41,000 hours. We got another maybe three minutes if you cut out all the commentary and just splice together the video. How much was it? Not much. And that was too much for them. These lies continue tonight. Rupert Murdoch, who has admitted they were lies and said he regretted it, has a special obligation to stop Tucker Carlson from going on tonight now that he's seen how he has perverted and slimed the truth and from letting him go on again and again and again. So he wants, again, to outsource his censorship. You know, he can't do that. If he could, if he could just pass a bill and just take Tucker Carlson, round him up from his home in front of his children, like they did with a lot of the pro-life efforts out there, they would do that. He can't do that. So just like the FBI tried to outsource their censorship of Americans to Twitter and Twitter obliged, they're outsourcing this now to the cable companies. Chuck Schumer's like, holy crap, that's a great idea. Why did I think of this? All I have to do is just go out and ask a private company to censor somebody and they do it. And uh, Elvis Chan over at the FBI is hanging out with Christopher Ray, and they're like, yeah, you're yeah, for real, bro. No kidding. We, we do that all the time. Yeah, we sent like a thousand emails and they just removed everything. So Chuck Schumer says, oh, perfect. I'm going to get out there and I'm going to try that. He's like, I'm going to have Fox News, uh, ban Tucker. And Fox News evidently did. They're like, oh, well, okay. I guess we're scared of you guys. Not because their views deserve such a proprium, but because our democracy depends on it. Yeah, all right. So the democracy depends on only one side of the conversation moving forward, only one narrative ever making its way to the American public. Hmm. Very curious. Now, Chuck Schumer was upset about this. We got several minutes of him yesterday and even more time today. 
But he is not alone. It's very curious why he's being joined by a bunch of other Republicans like Tom Tillis, like Romney, and like others who are saying, yeah, I was here. It was a big, massive insurrection. And I want to just put a pin in all of this right now because we are going to get to this later. But I'm going to explain exactly how many cases were ultimately charged in this and why this was really actually minor. We're talking about about 300 felonies, maybe, that were charged. We're going to go through it in more detail. We're talking about maybe 10% of all the cases, about 100 of them being seriously violent. The others were basically throwaway cases. All right. So uh, 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 we'll get to that. We'll get to it all in a minute. It fires me up so much I can't even take it. So they're going to continue with this fake narrative, with this hoax language about what a catastrophe this was, when we have about 1,000 cases in this whole ordeal. Let's listen to Tom Tillis and some of these other hysterics sort of rewrite their own version of history. It's very self-serving for them to be heroes who survived one of the greatest attacks on American democracy, right? It doesn't serve them if it comes out and it turns out they're all a bunch of hysterics. They need this big lie to continue forward. Otherwise, they look like fools. They turn around and they say, oh, you guys were just complaining. You, Jacob Chansley was an insurrectionist. He was getting toured around the building by the officers. You guys are a bunch of weenies. You know, this was a big, giant joke. And so they have to stick by this. They have to double down on it. Is, um, is this a lie? I think it's bull****. I was down there. And I saw maybe a few tourists, a few people who got caught up in things. But when you see police barricades breached, when you see police officers assaulted, all of that, or you had to be in close proximity to it, if you were just a tourist, you should have probably lined up at the visitor center and came in on an orderly basis. Okay, so he is talking in broad generalities. I think it's BS. We don't know exactly what that is, but we're, we're sort of trying to deconstruct Tucker's argument and what their argument is. I mean, the only real thing that Tucker did was sort of point out that there is more to the story. The select committee selectively clipped out Josh Hawley. They made up an entire narrative about Brian Sicknick. There are so many fictions, it's hard to keep track of them all. They charged Ray Epps, didn't charge Ray Epps. Jacob Chansley was this violent insurrectionist. He was paraded around the congressional building by multiple officers. So what is BS about learning about that other context, about expanding the hula hoop? It just seems like it's fair and proper. We went through the entire sentencing of Jacob Chansley yesterday. Do you think the judge got to see all of that? I doubt it. Now, just so we're clear on this fear-mongering insanity, this is a new senator, I think. And is he a senator or is he a representative? He's a representative. This is a new Democratic representative. His name is Goldman. And he is speculating that what McCarthy did by releasing this new footage is going to be inspiring the next insurrection that everybody's going to watch this footage, the footage that we watched and shared here on this channel yesterday. <gasps> and they're going to get ideas for version 2.0, insurrection reborn, harder, faster, stronger. Now, Congressman, Speaker McCarthy, as you well know, is released or made available in some nebulous way, some 40,000 hours plus of security footage from the Capitol and inside the Capitol on January 6th to Fox News primetime editorialist Tucker Carlson. Are you satisfied that- Editorialist. Wasn't he over at Fox News for a long time? Isn't that Garrett something or other? Man, they're a bunch of backstabbers, aren't they? Do you know exactly how much has been viewed and the ultimate implications of that viewing process? No, uh, we, we Democrats were not consulted on this at all. This was oh. done uh, unilaterally by the speaker. Who wow, you mean sort of like the unilateral appointment of the Republicans to the select January 6th select committee, the fake committee that was illegally constituted, didn't even follow their own rules under H.R. 503 to have the proper formation of both Democrats and Republicans on the same body. Didn't do that. Hmm. Yeah, Nancy Pelosi just picked Cheney and Kinzinger. Huh. So why do you think that you're entitled at all to any cooperation at all? In fact, I have said long for a long time that the Republicans should just form their own stupid select committee and literally do anything they want. 
And the courts really have no precedent to do anything about it because there's precedent saying that if you sued the January 6th Select Committee, they said, sorry, we can't get in, in involved in a separation of powers affair. If the House wants to run their affairs that way, they're free to do that. So we say, okay, well, guess who's in charge of the House now? Like, if this is how the government is going to run, the Republicans can play this game too. I hope they do. I hope we're seeing just the birth of this. It's going to be a ton of fun. Didn't even consult with the Capitol Police. Uh that is not true. We saw on the Tucker videos that they blurred out the wall. We ha had a whole conversation about that yesterday. Why didn't they just release all the footage with all of the redactions? Okay, take your 41,000 hours, redact the walls, redact the things that nobody can see just going through a simple tour visit through the grounds which is mostly where these people were, you know, the restricted areas and area and stuff like that. But, you know, you don't, you, you don't see all that stuff on the tour. You don't get to do what Jacob Chansley did and go up there and say, hey, you know, I'm in, this, I'm in the Senate chamber or anything like that, of course. But the point is, you know, they're going to hide behind this veil of national security. We can't see anything. What about, uh, how about 20,000 hours of it, right? Just give us half the cameras. About the uh, release of these thousands and thousands of hours of surveillance footage, which, you know, not only will provide a lot of uh, footage, but will also provide a roadmap for anyone who wants to understand what kind of surveillance there is of the Capitol in the that? event that they want to uh, <laughs> do something nefarious uh, once again. Uh, Insurrected again? Oh, no. Insurrection Geddon. Trump is back 2024. MAGA murder again. Dun, dun, dun. You know, I mean, these people are psychos. And he also doesn't realize that this is not even factually true. Tucker Carlson didn't release thousands of hours. I wish he would have. We're all sitting here waiting for it. Can we get a thumb drive, please? I have an extra hard drive. It's in the closet back there. Can we have that? You know, can we just get the whole thing? We'll stream it here. I told, we did the math yesterday. We can stream for 6.6 .6 years and cover all 40,000 hours. It'd be a lot of streaming, but it'd be worth it. We'll do it. So, you know, this is this is fictional because Tucker only actually released two minutes, three minutes of new footage. Or maybe it's more than that, but I mean, it's very condensed. We saw it on a repeat yesterday. But come on, man. And I, I think the, the fact that the speaker gave this material to uh, the number one January 6th denier uh, on television, Tucker Carlson, is very noteworthy. Um, I, I'm not sure whether it's the speaker's idea or whether this was part of the backroom deal that he had to make in order to get elected speaker. Uh. But it just goes to show uh, how extremist the Republican Party is right now. Yeah, really extremist for demanding transparency and just wanting to see a little bit more footage. Just a little bit more. It's a bunch of extremism that is now taking over. But he made a couple interesting points here. Let's listen. Not sure whether it's the speaker's idea or whether this was part of the backroom deal that yeah. he had to make in order to get elected. The backroom deal, they're trying to smear the messenger, right? They're, they don't like the fact that the evidence is now available. So the person who made the evidence available, it's the shoot the messenger smear, right? They want to go after McCarthy rather than having to defend the evidence. Oh, McCarthy only did this. He just, just he's got a a prejudiced reason to release this stuff. Of course, it's going to make us look bad. He's so biased. He was promising the extremists of the party that this would come out. And then that is what got him the speakership. Vision Tucker Carlson is very noteworthy. Um, I, I'm not sure whether it's the speaker's idea or whether this was part of the backroom deal that he had to yeah. make in order to get elected. All right. So that's the meme. There's also going to be another meme about this roadmap for future attacks. And of course, they're going to continue to freak out about it. Now, we have others, the media also upset. Now, you'll see this. This was another, I think, congressman. There's this interesting phrase that we heard from Representative Goldman, which was J6 denier. You know, we heard election denier, uh, science denier, COVID denier, all sorts of other things. Many of those have been proven to be basically true, you know. So we're back into this conspiracy land. Now they're really going hard with that phrase. I think typically what happens is they wake up and they get an email. Uh, these are your talking points, uh, little robots. Here's what we need you to do. All the Congress people wake up and they go, oh gosh, oh, what time is it? Oh, okay, here's my points. Okay, here's what I have to say. They're scrolling through it. 
Oh, here it is. J6 denier. Can you say that? And they go, oh, well, yeah, I can figure that out. It's like three words. Okay. Okay. So J6 denier. Okay. So here, th that is fine. We are going to use that. And we saw that first from Goldman. We also heard that from this person here. We're going to hear that again and watch how this gets used all around the media. And I, personally, I am thrilled with this label. Yes, I do deny that this was an insurrection. 100%. Look, I have no objection to the release of the security footage. As Let's volume this up a little bit. Low recording for whatever reason. Look, I have no objection to the release of the security footage as long as, long as it's done in a manner that's consistent with security. Uh, it's one thing to release it, but it's something else to release it to Tucker Carlson, who's a January 6th denier. There's, been, there's no one who's been more relentless in downplaying and denying the insurrection against the United States Capitol than Tucker Carlson. And as Nobody was charged with insurrection. Insurrection is in the U.S. code. We looked at it this morning on our members only stream. And we also searched for the Capitol Hill cases to see if anybody had been charged with insurrection. Still, nobody has been charged with insurrection at all, which is weird. We have seditious conspiracy charges. We have different assault charges. We have a ton of of criminal trespass charges, which are jokes. We have a ton of criminal uh, damage charges, which are jokes. Stuff that you get at Old Town in bars on 6th Street, wherever it is you live, you know, happens thousands of times a year in your city. Nobody throws, you know, nobody cares about it. Happens a few hundred times in Congress. It's an insurrection, the worst thing that's ever happened since the Civil War. But this wasn't an insurrection. Nobody was charged with insurrection. There wasn't this orchestrated plot to take over the government. But they keep saying this phrase. I don't think they know what it means. As far as I'm concerned, releasing the footage to a January 6th denier like Tucker Carlson is as absurd as appointing Marjorie Taylor Greene to the Homeland Security Committee. So there's a sense in which I feel like I'm living in an alternate reality yeah. with Republicans in charge of the House. Yeah, we know what that feels like. All we're asking for is the video footage. You just said that you were okay with it. Tucker got access to it. And so you're upset that he is, I guess, editorializing it. Would you support, my question to him would be, would you support releasing all of it? Just redact some of the security concerns and release the whole dang hard drive. You know, and I think there's some new reporting that Marjorie Taylor Greene was um, pro releasing the tapes to Tucker Carlson. I mean, you you make. Oh, my gosh. The condescension. Look at that. Look at that. She's she's like worse than I am. Some new reporting that Marjorie Taylor Greene was um, pro releasing pro. the tapes to Tucker Carlson. <laughs> I mean, you, you make such a, an important and specific point about Tucker Carlson. I mean, Man. And Ted Cruz agreed with Christopher Ray, who described January 6th as an act of domestic terrorism until Ted Cruz. OK, well, why didn't they charge anybody with domestic terrorism then? Why didn't they? Has anybody been charged with domestic terrorism? Haven't seen that either. We just got a bunch of Antifa people got released on bail bond, you know, four hours later or whatever. They got charged with domestic terrorism. Has anybody been charged with domestic terrorism here? The FBI agrees with Ted Cruz? Wow, you're kidding me. Both those people, they hate Trump. They hate MAGA Republicans. They hate that entire wing of the party. They would love them all to be thrown out into the dumpster so that they could inherit it. Showed up on Tucker Carlson's show and in an excruciating interview said, no, 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 I, you know, that's not what I meant. I mean, why do you think Kevin McCarthy is now participating in this rewriting of the January 6th narrative? Look, it's all about pandering to Donald Trump. Um, oh, there Kevin it is. McCarthy was, was against January 6th denial before he was for it. Fox News uh, was against uh, election denial before he was for it. And it's all about placating the extreme far right, the MAGA Republicans. Uh, and it's outrageous. Um, you know, January 6th was Ultra. one of the worst assaults on the U.S. Capitol in American history. And I remember vividly with my... Oh, did you see that language change? The worst assaults on you on the U.S. Capitol. Be mindful of that language, my friends. That's intentional. I don't think this guy's actually a dummy. And, you know, unlike a lot of the other Congress people, he's very careful with his language. And he said it was the worst assault on the Capitol. That is true. It's hard to argue with that. However, he also said insurrection, you know, so he's very careful with his words. He's pretty wrong on the insurrection. He's closer to accurate on that, you know, legally. They kept saying it was the greatest assault on, on democracy. Remember how often they said that? Hey, undermine democracy. And you go, are you people serious right now? You, you voted that night, four hours later. What are you talking about? You had like a bathroom break for you people. And then you came back in. They didn't even have to do that much security clearance. No, no anthrax sweep, no chemical sweep, no uranium anywhere. You just walked back in, voted, and it was done that night. 
6 was one of the worst assaults on the U.S. Capitol in American history. And I remember vividly, it was my third day on the job, uh, members of Congress were brought to secure locations, and I'm concerned that that footage could reveal the secret locations to which members of Congress uh. were brought, to which the vice president was brought, to which leadership was brought. Uh, it's not something to be taken lightly. Did you hear that? These two statements are basically the same. It's just unbelievable. They literally get the same talking points. They go out, they just regurgitate it. They are copy and pasters, just like the other journos out there. Goldman came out, you know, this is a roadmap for future attacks. I'm worried there could be another insurrection. You fast forward, same thing. MSNBC, you're, all, you're both J6 deniers. We're also both concerned about the future of America. All right. Now they're not alone. Anderson Cooper also is talking <laughs> to this guy. You remember this guy, Fanoni. Anderson Cooper talking to Michael Fanoni, one of the very heroic January 6th police officers who has now quit the Capitol Hill police. And I think he's sort of a CNN correspondent or something. Not sure exactly what his day job is. But this is Anderson Cooper making fun of Tucker. You know, I mean, the idea of Tucker Carlson being in that mob that day and not wetting his pants is hard to imagine. Wow. I, mean, th th I, I find it hard to understand somebody who has never put himself in harm's way in, in any capacity for anyone else uh, mm. or on reporting a story um, and yet has the audacity to try to rewrite history. I mean, that, that's what this is. It, it is an attempt to rewrite history on what is one of the most consequential you know, certainly one of the biggest events in American democracy and the uh, biggest threats to American democracy. Yeah, right. one of the biggest threats to American democracy, a four hour riot where they voted back that same night. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. And less than a thousand people charged with crimes yeah, and less than 30 mm, percent with violent crimes. The rest were just trespass and damage stuff, if that. And he mind he, he's sort of presuming that Tucker Carlson hasn't done the things that he wishes he had done, and therefore his opinion about January 6th is invalid. Does he know that Tucker Carlson has never done anything to save anybody or to put himself in harm's way or anything like that? I don't know what he wants him to do. I agree. I mean, Tucker Carlson is, you know, by his own admission, an entertainer, not a journalist. Um, and on, on top of that, he's just proven himself to be uh, Donald Trump's chief propagandist. And that's all this was, and I think that uh, you know most Americans recognize that uh, way before this uh, segment aired, that this was propaganda, uh, and it was an attempt uh, by Tucker Carlson to uh, to downplay and, and whitewash the events of January sixth. You know, I mean, propaganda is what they're upset about when the entire January 6th select committee presentation was propaganda. They gave Brian Sicknick a state funeral. He didn't die on January sixth or, or from January sixth. He died of natural causes. The Capitol Police even admitted that. So you want to talk about propaganda. You want to talk about people who actually don't do anything and fake like they do. It's all astroturf. It's like a stucco facade. It's crumbling all around them and they are freaking out. They're panicked as can be. You want to talk about propaganda. Remember this guy? Remember this guy? Anderson Cooper? Remember these images? CNN, these idiots? He's out, I'm standing in the water over here. Hurricane something, you know? I can't believe George Bush. And so, we're all going to die, you know? And it's him waiting in there. And they're just doing these scenes, right? I guess that's him, you know, I guess risking himself. Or maybe they'll show us another image. He'll be in a bulletproof vest somewhere in the Middle East or whatever it is. But, you know, these people are just uh, really really petty in many ways. You know, they're really petty. All we're asking for is to see a little bit more of this footage. I'm sure if Tucker Carlson could have, he would have released more of the footage. But as we heard from him, there was a big hurdle for him to even see the footage, right? He couldn't access certain software tools to do indexing or cross-referencing or reverse image searching or identity searching or any of that stuff. Instead, he had to just sort of, you know, rummage through the files. And he did. And he brought to us some amazing details that are helping to crack that facade. But another person in the media, CBS, they're doing the same thing. They're all trying to sort of uh, dogpile on Tucker. After Fox News host Tucker Carlson aired previously unseen video of the assault on the Capitol on his show last night, what Carlson did is use selected clips from surveillance tapes provided. Okay, that's exactly what the January 6th Select Committee did. They used select tapes, selected clips. We covered that yesterday. That Holly clip? That was about a two second clip. They forgot the 10 seconds that showed before Holly, 
the rest of the lawmakers going out, right? It was pure propaganda. They were laughing. They were mocking it. They're very upset when Tucker does it. They're okay when their team does it. These people are reprehensible. To him by House Speaker Kevin McCarthy to claim falsely that journalists and lawmakers lied about the January 6th attack on the Capitol. They Scott did. Scott McFarland is in Washington. Scott, good morning to you. Uh, you've been following this very closely. What stood out to you? Yeah, Tony, good morning. The narrative last night ignores the tens of thousands of pages of court filings we've read. And what does that have to do with anything? The filings? They're all very, very much the same. Many of them are being blamed for the entire thing, right? Every single individual J6 defendant is being blamed for the entire thing. We went through Jacob Chansley's sentencing transcript. If you want to look at that, you can. If you want to look at Jacob Chansley's statement of his offense, his factual basis, you can. It's going to show you. They're blaming him for the whole thing. Everything. It was just some guys who showed up. Jacob Chansley showed up in a costume, was extra loud, was extra energetic than the rest of the people, wasn't any extra violent or anything. It's sitting in prison still. And the tonnage of footage already released by the Justice Department and shown in open court, and it ignores the powerful and at times tearful accounts of injured officers who are testifying under oath. All of that was covered by people like you there, Seth, and your entity, CBS Morning News. You guys have been talking about this 24 seven for the last two plus years. We're kind of tired of it. We'd like to see the full story. That's why Tucker talked about it. So if you put it on a pie chart, his coverage, the truth coverage, the rest of the reality of what happened that day is just a tiny fraction of what we have been able to see. The rest of it has been your propaganda. It's been your time on the video game long enough Get off the controller, it's your brother's turn. Carlson called January 6th, quote, mostly peaceful and meek with a small percent that was violent. We are gonna go through that. It was about 10% that was very violent. I ran the numbers today. We have a full spreadsheet coming up on this. It's about 10%, I broke it down into two categories. Categories that are technically violent and then a subset of the tech that the government says was violent. So I think that's, you know, if we're gonna be generous, we'll go through it in a minute. But if you want to be ultra generous to the government and give them the benefit of the doubt, it is 30% of all of the crimes were technically legally violent. The ones that were involving a weapon or serious injury was only 10%, right? And we know that other weapons were often called water bottles, all right? So just take that for what it is. But if we look at it in a light most favorable to the government, it is small. It is minor. 10%, one out of 10 was violent according to the government. He showed limited edited footage Monday night on his program that draws an audience of 3.5 million viewers. Good for Tucker. And pointed to images. Are you bitter about that there, Seth? Sucks, huh? Images of a few protesters shuffling through the halls of Congress. But our CBS News Review found more than 300 people charged with actually. A wow, you're 300 people? Oh my gosh, 300 people? That's it? We're gonna to get to those numbers in a minute. Now they keep turning that into a big story. My friends, that is a joke, okay? We just had the Super Bowl here in Arizona. I guarantee you we've got 300 extra charges that are not much different than these. Assaulting police amid the mob and body worn. I mean by elements, right? Obviously they didn't happen at the Capitol building. On camera like this shows attackers using police officers and damage the Capitol. In the days after the day after the attack, walking through the Capitol, Brian Sicknick Carlson saying Sicknick quote looked healthy and vigorous, but according to the report from the D.C. Chief Medical Examiner, Officer Sicknick died after suffering two strokes. They are still at going the with this lie. His brain stem caused by a blood clot. He collapsed hours after being assaulted by the rioters. His family released a statement to CBS News Monday night saying. In they are continuing this big lie. We've talked about this so many times, I can't even take it. They're, why didn't they reference the Capitol Hill police officer statement, the, 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 their statement that they posted back in April of 2021 that says that he died of natural causes? Part On video, Officer Sicknick looks like Oh my gosh. He managed to shake off the chemical irritants and resume his duties. His sense of duty sent him back in and no doubt contributed to his succumbing to his injuries. What a scam. The chair of the House January 6th. Total scam. Brian Sicknick died of two strokes to the brain at 9.30 p.m. on January 7th. The coroner, the medical examiner, said no, no indication that it was related to trauma, related to chemical irritants, bear spray, nothing related to the fire extinguisher, said specifically natural causes. They're still lying about it. 
to their viewers on CBS outright lies. Committee blasted Speaker Kevin McCarthy for giving the footage to Carlson to, quote, spew lies and propaganda. The no, speaker guys defended are. his decision, saying those tapes belong to the American public. Tony. They do. Uh, Scott, you've covered this for two years. There have been all these court cases that you mentioned. Uh, have, have legal teams, defendants been given access to video like this? What have you learned from the, the uh, judicial process, I guess, is the question. Now, Tony, this isn't just the largest criminal investigation in American history. It's potentially one of the most photographed. There are thousands of hours of footage. Some defense attorneys have said it's almost too much. Some of the assault. No, it's not. It's not too much. I'd like to know what defense attorneys say, what, what defense attorneys said that. All right, these guys are out of control. This is the worst propaganda you've ever seen, which means that they are freaked out and ultra panicked about January 6th. I mean, it's they all got their talking points. They're all calling Tucker a weenie. They're all blasting him and perpetuating the big lies even harder and faster than before. Brian Sicknick has been debunked many times. The Capitol Police have even confirmed that, but they don't include that in their reports. So we turn our attention over to Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy is going to talk about why he decided to release this stuff to Tucker Carlson, and we're glad that he did. The Speaker of the House says transparency still matters in America. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. Because of the footage that you gave Tucker Carlson last night, he went on and said this is a mostly peaceful chaos as he said he downplayed brian sicknick's death said it was not related to january 6th it, it wasn't was not an insurrection do you regret it wasn't. giving him this footage so he could whitewash the events of that day no um i i said at the very beginning transparency and so what i wanted to produce for everybody is exactly what i said that people could actually look at it and see what's gone on that day so. but why for, but why, but mr speaker Look, each person can come up with their own conclusion, but I, what I just want to make sure is I had transparency. Do you believe because I know in CNN, I mean, I had here where you guys actually broke where we were. This was a secret location for wow. McLaren. I don't know if you got concerned by that. I don't even know from a point of view of security if we could ever be taken there again. But when you broke that at CNN, that was a real concern to a lot of people. I had a real concern. Just shattered that narrative. They're saying, oh, if you release this footage, it's going to cause a security breach and problem for us. And he says, well, that's weird. Why were you reporting on where we were, CNN? You didn't care about our security then, did you? Also, when I want to make sure transparency, look, um, the officer's death is tragic. And uh, any time an officer yep. is passed uh, Agreed. in this situation, uh, I want to make sure they're protected. I want to make sure the transparency is, goes forward. Speaking Speaking McCarthy, McCarthy, McCarthy. McCarthy, was this in any way part of the deal that you made no. to win the speakership no. to specifically give the content to No, the, to answer, the answer is no. And if, uh, if you follow, I'm not sure if you were there the times before, I got asked the question um, in a press what I would do in the process. I've watched on January 6th committee how it was only politically driven. On the January 6th committee, you couldn't have been much, the minority side wasn't allowed to put people on. Um, and I just thought it was fair if someone asked me the question, just transparency. So what I tried to do is be able to release the information, which we'll do to everybody. I worked with the Capitol Police. I asked them for any clips on the way that they had concern with the security level. Only one of the clips did, and we were able to change wow. that. An interesting thing the Capitol Police told us when we went through this is that January 6th never asked them about that, the security. So that's why they showed, unfortunately, President, uh, our Vice President Pence, when he was uh, being escorted out, they used my office on the escort of where he went out. They never asked the Capitol Police if that's showing security clearance that they shouldn't, which they didn't. They didn't ask me as well. I didn't. This is outstanding from McCarthy. He's basically turning it around on them. You're so petrified about security, huh? You think that what we gave Tucker was problematic? Tucker at least blurred out that one wall in that one clip, it was all run by the Capitol Hill police. So Dan Goldman and the other liars in the media who say Tucker didn't do that are liars. But we see that Tucker got a sliver of the footage, presented it. They're demanding that it be removed. Kevin McCarthy, good for him standing firm to this, saying transparency, transparency is key and Americans should have full access to this. And I completely agree with him. So love to see it. Now, I think what was also instructive out of this was he said the J6 committee didn't do that. They didn't go to the Capitol Hill police and also try to, to, to confirm that this was not a security breach. They were playing videos all day. We went through many of the different hearings here on this channel. 
listen to Liz Cheney and Kinzinger and fishing Benny Thompson and all of them day after day with their book reports for the American public playing video after video and PowerPoint slides, reading from teleprompters like robotic idiots, faking their somber, depressed moods. So McCarthy says they didn't do any of that security clearance stuff. Go talk to them about it if they're so concerned about it. Obviously, the media is just looking for something to latch on to. So the White House got asked about this as well. Hey, Corrine Jean-Pierre, she's giving a press briefing. Question for her about this new footage. You know, Tucker released this footage that shows your entire administration and a lot of people associated with you are liars. Do you have anything to say about that, Corrine? Ask you about the footage that was released by Speaker McCarthy. Speaker McCarthy said his decision to release the footage to Tucker Carlson was out of transparency. What is your reaction to that? And does the president want to see Speaker McCarthy release all of the footage broadly to other news outlets and the American people? Look, I, I'm just I'm not going to speak directly to that at, at this time. That's something that um, uh, you know that uh, the January Six Committee and clearly. Um, the DOJ is, is dealing with, and so I'm just not going to speak to that. Um, you know, that is something that the speaker needs to, to uh, answer uh, from from his colleagues and to the American people. Well, let me ask you this way. Does the president, does the White House feel the need to set the record straight about the footage that exists and what happened on that day in the wake of the footage that has been released? Say, can you say more? Like, what do you, like, do you, does the, the White the House straight? feel as though basically all of the footage should be released so people can see it within its full context? So the president believes we need to get to the bottom of what happened uh, on a very dark day in our democracy. The president has been very clear about that. We need to get to the bottom of what <coughs> occurred. The footage that we have seen, the footage that the American people have seen, uh, is devastating. Uh, and what we saw was an attack on our constitution, was an attack on our democracy. All right. And Same story again and again and again. We were attacked and attacked and attacked. Now, it is very tiring to hear her continue to say it. she doesn't have an opinion on this and can't answer anything and won't answer anything. It is like a broken record over and over again. But you can see now the deep state is in full panic mode. They are getting aggressive. They are sending their talking points out. And everybody is conforming. We saw that from MSNBC, CBS, CNN, from the Senate floor, from the Senate hallways and elsewhere. And now Tucker Carlson got that yesterday and he responded to some of this. And so, of course, he is the man at the center of this. So we want to give him an opportunity to respond. And last night he did some of that. Let's check out what he had to say on the Senate floor today to explode and to say that showing that video, evidence of wrongdoing by the federal government, including the security forces, the police department that Nancy Pelosi personally controlled, letting the public see any of that is a threat to democracy. Just to Watch. see it. Last night, millions of Americans tuned in to one of the most shameful hours we have ever seen on cable television. What a lunatic. Fox News host Tucker Carlson ran a lengthy segment last night arguing the January 6th Capitol attack was not a violent insurrection. I don't think I've ever seen it wasn't an insurrection and it was mostly nonviolent. So to call it those things is both technically and legally wrong. Seen a primetime cable news anchor manipulate his viewers the way Mr. Carlson did last night. I don't think I've ever seen an anchor treat the American people and American democracy with such disdain. <laughs> There's nothing that shameful that has ever appeared on American television in the history of the medium. And so on the basis of that, the self-evident outrage of showing the public video that it paid for and has a right to see, Chuck Schumer called for the censorship of that video. Any information of you, bro. he did not dispute that it was accurate. The damage is a storyline his party constructed and used must be squelched. And Schumer was explicit on that point. Because that video contradicted lies told by the Democratic Party, Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger, Chuck Schumer demanded that our bosses pull this show off the air. Which is absolutely insane. He's going insane. to come back tonight with another segment. Fox News should tell him not to. Fox News, Rupert Murdoch. Tell Carlson not to run a second segment of lies. I urge Fox News to order Carlson to cease propagating the big lie on his network. 
and to level with their viewers about the truth, the truth behind the efforts to mislead the public. So I thought the big lie was about the election. Is this also about January 6th? I mean, there's two entirely separate issues. So did they just repurpose the big lie for January 6th? Because I think it's appropriate to call January 6th the big lie, or that it was this insurrection, that it was a, a mostly violent insurrection. That's totally erroneous. It's not even close. So I think that's the big lie. So I don't know. I think everybody's going to be taking that phrase over for a little while now. Conduct like theirs is just asking for another January 6th. Do you hear that? That's where the talking point came from. That's why they said Dan Goldman and the other representatives are saying, oh, yeah, those ultra mega mega Trumpers are still out there and they're lurking around with their freedom. Be careful because there could be insurrection 2.0. You never know what they probably should do is, I don't know, hire a few thousand more FBI agents to investigate the domestic homegrown violent extremism, huh? To happen. It's a threat to democracy. Pull him off the air. A couple of obvious observations. You don't often see the Senate majority leader openly call for censorship on the floor of the Senate. Yeah. And I just got to pause on that. I, I really, you know, as I said yesterday, I know these things are sort of clowny issues and we can joke about this from time to time. And we can look at Chuck Schumer and say, what a goofball he is. And, you know, this whole system's corrupt and who cares and whatever. This is a giant problem in America. The fact that somebody is literally doing this. I mean, I can't tell you how much appreciation I have for Tucker Carlson to be able to come on TV and address this when you have the Speaker of the Senate, the Speaker minority of the Senate, when you have basically the entire government apparatus, FBI, CIA, the whole stinking deep state literally is focused on you like a laser beam. And this dude is just like, all right, I'm going to come out here and do a show. And I'm just going to say this, what you're about to hear anyways. It's, there's something to be said. I have so much appreciation for it. I'm so grateful that there are people like this that are willing to stand up because it gives all of the rest of us some cover. As if that was totally normal and didn't contradict the spirit and the letter of the First Amendment, but of course it does. But what's really happening here, what you're seeing is hysteria. The overstatement, the crazed hyperbole, the red in the face anger, what is that? Well, it's not outrage, of course, it's fear, it's panic. Those videos, which we did not retouch, which we brought to you after running everyone by, totally the responsible. Capitol Police to make certain that we didn't imperil anybody, we told you that last night, those videos, Touch a nerve because they're a threat to the lies that Chuck Schumer has been telling for the last 26 months, and not just Chuck Schumer. We should also tell you that Chuck Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader, was joined in this outrage by the Senate Minority Leader. Republicans, and That would too. be a Republican, Mitch McConnell. And they were joined by a cascade of other Republicans. Tom Tillis from North Carolina, Mitt Romney from Utah, yep. all sharing the same outrage. And from this, we learn two things. One, you're getting close to what they really care about. Yes. And you have to ask yourself, why? Why is it so important that they would degrade themselves by telling such obvious lies and calling for censorship? Why? What are they trying to protect? That might be worth exploring, and we plan to. And the second thing that we learned from this is that they're on the same side. The Senate Majority Leader joins the Senate Minority Leader. Tom Tillis, Mitt Romney, <laughs> they're all on the same side. So it's actually not about left and right. It's not about Republican and Democrat. Here you have people with shared interests, the open borders people, the people, <laughs> the people like Mitch McConnell who are living in splendor on Chinese money. The people who underneath it all have everything in common are all aligned against everyone else. Yep. And that would include almost all news organizations in this country as well. And so if you're watching this, it might be kind of interesting to keep a list because one thing we learned today is that they're all in agreement with each other. They kind of outed themselves. They sort of showed their membership cards and whatever club this is they to did. the public. So keep a list. If you want to know who's actually aligned, despite the illusion of partisanship, we found out today. We have a little more tape for you tonight. So they are orienting themselves big time against Tucker Carlson. 
And it is going to be something that I think is not going to let up. I think you're seeing the realignment, Republicans, Democrats, the amount of pressure that is coming down to bear on Fox News, the amount of pressure right now that is coming down to bear upon Tucker Carlson, I can't even imagine. And so I just have to say, I'm so grateful and appreciative for him. You know, he's sort of the first one through the door on a lot of these issues, and he holds it open for the rest of us. And so we're grateful for him. So keep our uh, you know thoughts and energy and prayers out for Tucker as he continues to navigate this, because it is important stuff. Field of Greens is a great company that's going to make you feel great and you're going to love their product. And, you know, we all would like to lose some of those extra pandemic pounds. And we all know how sick we are of those fad diets and those weight loss pills and all of that stuff. But we have been there and we have done that. And we know that they do not work. But you know what does? Eating five healthy servings of fruits and vegetables every day. You do that and the weight would probably fall right off. But look, vegetables, not a fan. And fruits, who's got time to prepare that stuff every day? Instead, Let's talk about Field of Greens. Now, Field of Greens is a science-backed formula, very specific fruits and vegetables that you're not going to find in any other product. Proper nutrition reboots your metabolism so you can burn calories the faster way and lose weight healthier. And Field of Greens is the only product that's backed by a better health promise. You're going to look healthier. You're going to feel healthier. But the better news is going to come at your next checkup when your doctor says, wow, you've lost weight, whatever you're doing keep it up. And so let's get you started. Very easy. Open up a new tab in your browser, go on over to fieldofgreens.com. They've got a ton of good stuff there. They have the real organic superfood, field of greens. They've got collagen. They've got sleep stuff. They've got exercise stuff and the vegetables want to be eaten. So go to fieldofgreens.com. Use code Robert to save 15% off your first order. And you're going to love their stuff. I love mine. Get your field of greens at fieldofgreens.com.